Now suppose that you have an audio signal that you've created in LabVIEW and you'd like to write that out to a WAV file. The simple write sub VI is a convenient way of doing this. Using context help, let's just explore the terminals that we see. As far as terminals are concerned, there are not too many to work with. And we really just need to provide the data a place for it to go and then we can optionally specify the number of bits. So what I'm going to do to find a signal source is uh, actually read a WAV file first. This will just be a quick way of getting an audio signal set up. Well we won't be able to do anything until the broken run arrow is corrected so let me go ahead and establish the connection directly from the simple read to the simple write. And so we have a file to read from. I'll call that in.wave and then this of course is where we are writing to. That's our out.wave. And I will read the WAV file called Tone Noise. This is a tone burst followed by a noise burst. And I will use the same path as my input file. And I'll go ahead and call that practice.wave. I'm going to create a constant for the number of bits, defaults to 16, and I recommend that you use that routinely since that gives you the highest fidelity in your output. Now we run and don't see too much evidence, but if we look at the file folder we see that practice.wave now exists where formerly it did not. Supposing I want to do a little bit of signal processing on my uh, original wave file. So I'm going to do a reverse 1D array for my signal processing. So what I need to do is get the waveform components and then uh, after I'm done doing my processing build a new waveform. So let me scoot this out of the way. Let's break this connection and then send the output of my wave file into get waveform components. Well, let's check out what the complaint is. It says that we have a, a mismatch between a 1D array of waveforms and simply waveforms. So what we need to do is actually specify which of the channels coming out of our wave reading device we want. So I'll use index 0 to select the left channel of audio. Now I have a single waveform. That works fine. So the Y output is my actual array of sample values. I'll pass those through my reverse processor and then send those back to the build component or build waveform device. Pull that down and select the DT attribute, which is our sampling interval. So I'll simply grab the sampling interval from my incoming wave file and use the same value for my outbound wave file. All right, what's going on here? Well, we're kind of back to the waveform versus 1D wave wave uh, forms issue. So I'll delete that one and I need to make this look like an array. So I'll use the build array node. And now we have a 1D array of waveforms. Now I'd like to be able to listen to the file that we've created as our processed output. Okay, if you can hear something on uh, pressing the test button, you know your sound card is configured properly. Now, if you might remember, it was tones and then noise, so now we heard noise and then tones.
All right, so there's the other way around. Looks like everything works fine. 